Brothers and sisters, there is evil in the world and it manifests itself as pie charts. And pie charts are evil because they prevent us from easily understanding simple numerical information. Look at this pie chart. Can you tell if B is bigger than A, if D is bigger than E? Not easily, because the pie chart requires you to compare the angles of the slices. And human cognition is crap at comparing angles. That's why you struggle. Instead of a pie chart, the same data represented as a bar chart, you can immediately comprehend, comprehend which, which um, value is the biggest and which is the smallest. And that's because it's using length in the bar chart. And we, and we are good at comparing lengths. And I'll be a little bit quieter, but I'm so excited. You can use a pie chart if the data that you're dealing with is uh, very basic, such as a, um, a Dell, this Dell one here, where they're telling us that 54% is bigger than 46%. And if you didn't already know that, you're not bright enough to buy a computer. Here's an example from the Finn Review. Even worse, they've done it on an angle and 3D. We convert it into a bar chart and we can immediately see what's going on with the data and we can start to understand it. <laughs> Here's another example, again from the Australian Financial Review, a premier um, newspaper in Australia. And uh, we can see this wacky pie chart at the top that's got this strange half ball face to it. Again, the bar charts are much easier to understand. If you look at the horizontal bar chart, the advantage is that the labels can be written like that, rather than being at a funny angle. Two pie charts is really evil, because how on earth are you supposed to be able to compare the data between the two of them? It's impossible. It acts as of evil. Even worse, and this is from the premier financial magazine, um, BRW, on their Rich 200 list we see that um, they've made them into donuts and they've got four pie charts that you're supposed to be able to compare. Obviously, the line chart on the right-hand side is much easier. Here we get into a wacky comparison of between two donut pie charts with very strange sort of shading and colouring and it's just virtually impossible for you to be able to make any sense. That's from IAG's annual report, a leading Australian company. This is from last year's... This is from... This is from, La I swear to you, 2008 annual report for West Farmers. West Farmers is the largest private employer in Australia. The middle number is the 200, the middle circle is the 2007 figures, the outer circle is the 2008 figures. It's impossible. Bar charts can also be, be evil. This is taken from Macquarie Group, a leading investment bank in Australia, and they have these stacked bar charts that they're using to demonstrate the performance of six operating units. But really, if we convert them into more traditional bar charts, you can start to see that the real estate group and the banking and finance group are going south. You couldn't tell that on the other bar chart. And you should play around with your charts to try and get, get more and more simplicity and ease of understanding. So here's the same information once again, broken up into six bar charts, one for each operating group. And you can really see that real estate group is looking pretty terrible. And that was completely hidden on the first stacked bar chart that we had earlier on. Apart from um, bar charts, bar charts that use chart junk, so these buildings here are supposed to represent information. Chart junk is a term from Edward Tufte. It's impossible for you to make any meaningful comparison, even though it's a bar chart type format, the junk gets in the way. And this junk can be very distracting. <laughs> Possibly even offensive. Um, and of course you'll also notice that there's just a gratuitous use of colour that is meaningless. And this is a, this is a, a fairly good one. It's from um, a famous economist called um, Kenneth uh, Galbraith. Braithwo? Galbraith or something? And um, he's, but unfortunately he's moved, made gratuitous use of colour. He's trying to see what, how you get your best bang for your stimulus spending. And he's got a little vague line over there. And uh, so we just reorganise it. So all the stimulus spending for the stuff that's in blue, that's good. You're getting good bang for your buck. With the stuff in red, you're getting less bang for your buck. So just being careful about the use of colours and how you position things to make the un information more understandable. <laughs> according to this line chart, according to this line chart, the um, increase in global temperatures is being caused by a reduction in the number of pirates in the world. Yes. <laughs> You, you could, no, 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 the numbers go left to right at descending, which is bad practice as well. 
this is a, a lovely little um, bl blog site from Jessica Haggy called Indexed, and every day she does these lovely little index cards and has Venn diagrams and all sorts of things. And so once a day you get a nice little chart appearing in your inbox, and it's quite a sweet thing. It's lovely. And finally, why not even just not use a chart at all? So for that Dell, just say 54%. Don't insult your, your audience by putting a chart around it and have an evocative photograph that can resonate and make them feel good. So when you return home, when you return home and you're in Excel and you're tempted by a pie chart, resist! Brothers and sisters, resist! <laughs>